In this video we're going to learn how to divide decimals as you might have guessed now that we've learned how to add and subtract and multiply them. And this is basically the method. We'll multiply first to make whole numbers then we'll divide them so we can multiply by 10, 100, 1000 etc. So, the best way to learn this is by doing a lot of examples and I'll just explain what I'm doing as I'm going along. Now, the first one I've got 4 divided by 0.8. Now, you should know from learning about multiplying tens, hundreds and thousands that if I multiply this by 10 I'll get an 8 which is a whole number but if I multiply this by 10 I must also multiply that by 10 so then I get a new problem 40 divided by 8 which is 5 and it's very strange but because we've done the same thing to both numbers 5 also happens to be the answer to this as well and you can check that on your calculator if it doesn't make sense next one here yeah, multiply both these by 10 same thing because there's only one note so then I get 9 divided by 3, which is 3. And that'll be the answer. And this one, I can't multiply by 10. I've got an extra 2 notes, so I must multiply both things by 1,000. Then I multiply this by 1,000, I'll get 100. And I multiply this by a thousand, I'll get five. So that's a hundred divided by five, which is twenty. Next one. Because I've got two notes in this one, I need to multiply both things by a hundred. So I'll get 30 on this side, and we'll get a 6 on the other, so I get 30 divided by 6, which is again 5, so 5 would be the answer to that problem. Now, this last one, we've, still, we've got a number in front here, but there's still two numbers after the decimal point. So, we need to multiply by 100 to get rid of both of those decimal points to make it a whole number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both by 100. And then I'll get 2000 divided by 125, which is 8. So I'm um, so that one's going to be 8. Now, the next examples I want to do is where we've got whole, where we're dividing two whole numbers, but the result we get is a decimal. So, should be a 16 sorry I've had to scribble that out I forgot the rubber next ones we want to do is once where we've got examples of whole numbers and we get a decimal as a result so let's have a look at them we we'll divide them normally so yeah, the 4 goes there, the 1 goes here. 
Forcing the one doesn't go, so that's going to be a zero. And then what we'll do is we'll add a decimal. We'll add the decimal on the note. Then forcing the ten. That's a two. We mean the two. We'll add on an extra note. And get five. That goes exact, so that's going to be 0 0.25. So we'll keep going until we get no remainders. Next one's gonna be next example we'll do it the same way. Eight isn't the one, doesn't go so that's gonna be a zero. So now it's gonna be eight isn't the ten, that goes one. That goes one and we're gonna get a remainder of two. 2, 8 and a 20, that goes 2, we're going to get a remainder of 4, we need to add another 0, and 8 and a 40 goes exact, that goes 5, so the answer is going to be 0 0.125 for that one. Next one, something a bit different is going to happen, which is going to be... Phase into two doesn't go. Phase into twenty goes six. And we'll get a remainder of two. Then we'll get phase into twenty again, that's six. Remainder two. And we'll get six again. And it's always gonna leave a remainder of two. And it's always gonna be six. So this actually goes on forever and ever and ever. And that is called a recurring decimal. And what we can do instead of writing it out like that, we can just put a little dot above the six and that tells me that it's going to go on forever. One more problem. That's going to be 0 because 5 doesn't go into 3. 5 goes into 30. 6 times. So we get 0 0.6. Not 0 0.6 occurring because that went exact and the other one it didn't. So. The important point is. I want to mention is when you use this method if you multiply something by one number like if you multiply one by ten, one by a hundred or one by a thousand you must multiply both numbers by that otherwise you're going to change the problem and the problem with the whole numbers isn't going to give you the, be the same answer as the one with the decimals in other words, the original problem. So that's something you need to be very careful about and you can check these on your calculator by putting in the original problems and you'll see that these are the right answers and that this method in fact works.